little quick. Well, and for the Massachusetts State Ice Hockey Championships get underway for the Green Wave tonight. For the first time ever, a state tournament game will be played right here at the Collins Moylan Arena in Greenfield. Tonight, the Gardner Murdoch Wildcats take on the Western Mass champion, Greenfield Green Wave. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Green Wave Tournament Hockey on GCTV and FCAT. I'm the skate doctor, Lou Bordeaux, joined tonight by the coach, Bill Drake. Draker, unlike 2020 when the Wave battled Lunenburg in a one-game winner-take-all championship, this season most teams will have to win five straight while the Wave are going to have to win six in a row to defend their state championship. That's right, Lou. Different format, but I'll tell you what. I'm ready for some playoff hockey. The CMA is packed, and six games is almost half a season of elimination hockey right there. And it starts tonight against a rejuvenated Gardner Wildcats squad. The CMA is packed and ready tonight. Fans are filling the stands almost an hour before game time, and they're in fine form already, and both team supporters are ready for the opening puck drop, which happens about three minutes from now. Now, before we get too deep into tonight's game, just want to let you know the Green Wave qualified for this year's state tournament. Their record overall is 12-6-2, with a Maya power ranking of 32nd in the state among the Division IV schools. Last week, the Wave added two big wins on their way to their second consecutive Western Mass Championship. Green Wave defeated the Belchertown Orioles in the semifinal round 5-3. And then despite a huge four-goal performance by Trevor Seidel Poirier, the Wave upended the Chicopee Pacers 5-4. For the Wave, two goals by Sammy Knight, including the game winner with just a minute 39 left in regulation and a 37-save performance by Josh Bordeaux were keys in that win. Now, as uh, Adam and I were talking about earlier, the Gardner Wildcats are not the same Gardner team that we last saw in 2019. This season, they put together a 5-3-2 record in their Central Mass Coughlin Conference and a 9-7-2 mark overall. They're ranked 33rd in the Maya Power Rankings. The Wildcats lost to the Oakmont Spartans for their Class C Championship one week ago tonight by a score of 4-2. Scouting report on Gardner is that they don't score a lot, but they don't give up a lot either. In 18 games, they've scored 52 goals while only giving up 42. Taking it one step further, two of their wins came against St. Joseph's Prep of Boston. Those wins were by scores of 11-3 and 9-2, so take those 20 goals away. Wildcats have scored 32 goals in 16 games. Averages two a game. So I think you got to like that on the opposite side of the ledger, Bill. Certainly. I mean, it's clear they play a defensive game, and they're going to be relying on their goalie, but... If Green Wave can score more than two, then it looks like they have pretty good odds of coming away the victors here tonight. Absolutely. I'd like to take a moment to thank our underwriters who helped make Green Wave hockey possible here on GCTV and FCAT. Greenfield Cooperative Bank, they're on the web, greenfieldcoopbank.com, or on the phone at 1-877-682-0334. Mesa Verde Greenfield, located at 10 Fisk Avenue, or on the web, mesaverdegreenfield.com. Alex Cyano, CPA. Give Alex a call, 377 Main Street. He's at 413-774-6036. Regary Real Estate, Joe's office, 82 Federal Street. Give him a call, 413-222-9291. Greenfield Savings Bank, 400 Main Street. They're on the web, greenfieldsavings.com. Terraza Restaurant at the Country Club of Greenfield. They're on the web, terrazagreenfield.com and the Balkan Lounge at 4 Ames Street. Be sure to check them out on Facebook. 
In just a moment, we're going to go down to Wally Gagne for tonight's starting lineups, the national anthems, and we're going to be back with state tournament action in just a moment. Okay, Skate Doctor here with Green Wave head coach Adam Bouchard just before today's state tournament game. Coach, it's been a big week for the Green Waves, Western Mass champions. Hey, Skate Doc, thanks for having me. You know, really appreciate uh, the support this team is getting again year after year. And, you know, what an amazing week it's been going into that Western Mass championship week with a semifinal game and uh, ended up coming away with the Western Mass championship going back to back, which is uh, just something amazing to see. And we get the opportunity not only to play in the state playoffs, but we get the opportunity tonight to host a state playoff game first time in greenfield program history we're hosting a game yeah you know it's it's pretty amazing right uh these group of student athletes continue to make history we get to do it again tonight uh first ever state playoff game uh competed here at the cma for this green wave program in uh, the 80 years of program history now the opponent tonight the gardner murdoch wildcats have come out route two they're going to play us tonight uh, it's not the same Gardner team that we saw a couple of years ago. No, you're absolutely right. Coach Trainer came in three years ago, and you're, you're, you named it. It's not it's not your grandmother's Gardner like it was. Uh, he's come in, come from a 1-19 season to an 0-20 season, now to a 9-6-2 season, I believe, is what they finished off this year. Uh, he's done a great job there. Those student athletes work hard themselves, you know, and, and you make the state playoffs uh, for a reason, and we're looking for a really good competitive hockey game today. What are we looking for out of this Gardner team tonight, Coach? Well, we know that they're, uh, they, they take pride in their defense and their goaltending. Uh, they've got a few boys uh, that can put the puck in the net as well. They've got two 11-goal scorers, uh, six or five, and a couple uh, two and three scorers after that. You know, their first line is pretty good. Uh, we're going to look to uh, do our thing and play Green Wave hockey, though. We feel that if we get the puck deep, get our four check going, good things are going to happen. Okay, we'll be looking forward to it. Thank you so much as always, Coach. We're going to be back with the starting lineups right after this. Go Green. Thanks, Coach.
Take your hats off for a national anthem. Thank you. Oh, and I stand corrected. The starting lineups are given us, to, uh, by, given us tonight by the one and only Alex Ciano. Not Wally Gagne. Wally Gagne is our mix master. Working the DJ booth over there tonight. Thanks as always to our game day operations crew. I had the opportunity to speak to Green Wave assistant coach Mike Duflos before the game and uh, had a very uh, almost sad thing to say that... Uh, Win or lose, tonight's game, this is going to be the last game on this ice for our seniors in the lineup tonight. Uh, should the Green Wave win, being the 32nd seed, everything's going to be a road game from here on out. So much love and respect to the seniors in tonight's lineup. MJ Paulin, Kevin Bowman, Benny Given, Jake Croto, and RJ Brondon. And of course, Logan Hume was here for senior night couple weeks ago so we thank them for their time in the program and uh, we are looking forward to some green wave hockey that's right they've got the balloons out it's a festive bench and it's an extra day of hometown playoff hockey and it's really brought the crowd out today here we go for puck drop all in right off the bat backhands it off the boards into the gardener zone Gardner breaks it out. Shane Prusak, he's got Kaczewski wide open. Quick change over on the Gardner side. Kaczewski right there. Battle behind the Gardner net. Comes right around. Lavoine couldn't get a stick on it. Puck was loose in the slot. Clearing attempt, gloved by Paulin. Sends it back out. He's got Prusak. Prusak drops it for Kevin Bauman. Kevin couldn't collect. Gets it some fast pace action right off the bat. Matt Garvin gains the Gardner zone. Can't control. Good defensive play by Ty Burdett. Puck comes out of the zone. Race for it. Nice back check by Hunter Smith. Jason Smith collects. He's stripped behind the goal. Jason picks it back up, comes up the boards. Sammy Knight wins that battle. Sends it back into the Gardner zone. Burdett sends it the length of the ice. Fast paced. First minute, 17 seconds, Bill. That was extremely fast paced. Green wave with three quick chances on that first shift. Really in tight, down by the paint. Nearly got a goal there. Just went a little wide on Prusak's shot. Then back the other way, and we're back in the Gardner zone for the puck drop. And we got Shane Prusak's line back out there. Ethan Bryant, wrist shot from the point. That's gloved by 
Goaltender Mark Quinn. Face off to Quinn's left side. One back to Bryant. Bryant. Shots taken with the right pad of Quinn into the corner. Prusak has it. Hoisington carries it out for Gardner. Cuts into the green wave zone. Shot save, Bordeaux. Max Murphy was the trailer there. Took advantage of that drop pass. Got the quick shot away. Faceoff's going to be to the right side of Green Wave goaltender Josh Bordeaux. 13-18 remain in the first period of play. Big, big crowd on hand tonight here at the CMA. It's a sea of bodies. All the bleachers are open tonight. Dylan, Dylan Archer sporting new wheels out there tonight. Croto applied the pressure. Gardner dumped the puck. Kevin Bauman's got it. He's broken up. Croto sends it up to Brody Gagne. Burdett sends it back into the green wave zone. Archer goes behind his own net. Loses an edge. Couldn't be controlled at the point by Brody White. It's a race. No icing. Gardner made that play. Cullen White sends it deep. Jason Smith on the far side. Avoids a check by Zach Boucher. Matt Lavoine harassed behind the green wave net. Prusak gets the puck out into the neutral zone. Sent back in again by Gardner. Jason Smith bounces one over to Prusak. Kevin Bauman says no. Lavoine battled two Gardner players on the far side. Left the puck for Kaczewski. Blocker save Bordeaux. Sent out of the zone by Matt Lavoine. Gardner goes D to D in their own zone. Brody White sends it all the way around. Picked up by Jake Jurek. Puck in the feet of the referee. Jurek sends it back down behind the Gardner net. And that clearing attempt sends all the way down the length of the ice. Bordeaux collects it for the referee. 11-18 to go in the first period of play. We'd like to thank Greenfield Cooperative Bank for underwriting our Green Wave hockey games this season. They're on the web, greenfieldcoopbank.com. Or give them a call, 877-682-0334. Gardner comes away with the draw. Hunter Barlow looks to make a play. Derek Wisman keeps in at the blue line. Paulin, long wrist shot, steered aside by Quinn. Sent out of the zone. Ethan Bryant got it back in at the red line. Jake Jurek on the four check. Wisman centering pass, picked off. Jackson Decker throws it in for Gardner. Matt Garvin can't clear the zone. Not connecting on the passing there. Loose puck picked up by Wisman. Derek Wisman with a big goal in that win over Chicopee last Thursday night. Matt Garvin right in the middle of that one. Battle for the puck down beneath the goal line. Garvin comes out with it. He's tripped. We're gonna get our first penalty of the game. So with 10.02 to go in the first period, going to get our first look at the Green Wave power play. Penalties to Hunter Barlow for tripping. That was great hard work there by that line, getting the puck down deep, pinning it against the boards, and then using their strength on a one-on-one -on -one battle to free that puck. Garvin gets away from his man. No choice really to, to pull him down there. 
And then Green Wave goes on a two minute power play in Gardner's zone for the faceoff. Back to the point. Pollen can't control. It's in the feet of the Gardner skater. Burdett, he can't control. Tries kicking it like a soccer ball. Finally gets it out. Kevin Bauman recalibrates. Plays catch with MJ Pollen. Pollen up the through the neutral zone to Kacheski. Kacheski over to Prusak. Prusak circles, drops it for Pollen. Pollen centering attempt didn't go. 120 footer steered aside by Bordeaux, went straight up in the air. Prusak breaks up the left side, cuts into the middle. Shot goes wide. Minute 15 remain in the Green Wave power play. MJ Pollen at the point. Kacheski to Bauman. Prusak picks it up behind the goal line. Centering attempt is right in the feet of Matt Lavoine. Puck comes back into the Green Wave zone. Under a minute remain in the penalty to Gardner. Long pass. Paul into Prusak. Prusak gets it into the zone. He's going in on a quick change. Paul in over the red line. Gains the Gardner zone. Follows it deep. Play goes all the way around the far side. Jason Smith at the point. Centering attempt just bounced over the stick of Wisman. Smith can't control at the red line. Backhands it out. Wisman's got it, gloved it, sent it into the Gardner zone. 15 seconds remain in the Green Wave power play. And the puck's up in the netting. We got a whistle. Faceoff is going to be. to the right side of was, Gardner goaltender Mark Quinn. That was some good puck movement there, Lou, in that power play with 14 seconds left. Just not connecting on those centering passes. Hunter Smith goes cross ice for Jason Smith. Centering attempt, couldn't control. Puck goes the length of the ice. Smith takes a look. Penalty's over. Teams are back at equal strength. Smith clears the red line. Sends the puck in deep. Prusak's right there. Battle in the far corner. Prusak looking to dig it out. He does. Centering attempt. Score! Matt Levine. Matt Levine makes it one nothing. Green wave. Shane Prusak took the puck from the corner, went behind the Gardner net. Lavoine camped right out. Put he's, the green wave up, one nothing. He's a tough body to move out of that, out of that crease, and he was right where he needed to be to get that feed from Prusak. Big early goal, chicken on the ice. That makes it official, right? That's right. Big hit by Gagne over in the Gardner zone. Puck now in Green Wave zone. Gagne over on the far side, picks it up. Oh, returns the favor. That, could, that should have been charging, holy smokes. Guy took a run at him from the blue line. And Garvin carries in offside. Green wave on top, one nothing. Pollen over to Ethan Bryant. Puck is chipped out, it's Lavoie the goal scorer. Long feet for Prusak, couldn't quite handle a saucer, backhand saucer pass. Bordeaux bats it into the corner, Kaczewski loses control. Nice diving play by Paulin, picked up at the point by Hunter Barlow. Barlow backhands it in. Ethan Bryant battling with Zach Boucher behind the net. Lavoine comes out with it. 
Puck comes out of the zone. Kaczewski couldn't control. Long pass went the length of the ice. Could have been deflected at center. Paulin chips it up the boards. Kept in by Colin White. Puck is loose. Puck goes back behind the greenfield net. Ethan Bryant lugs the mail. Cuts all the way into the Gardner zone. Finally, poke checked away the last minute. Jonah Hoisington carries in for Gardner. His centering attempt. Barlow got it. Bordeaux, big save. I think he took a stick in the head. He sure did. Swatted at it, made a little contact, and then got one right in the dome piece for his, for his efforts there. But he holds strong and settles everything down. Tied up the puck. Faceoff's going to be to his right side. 5.34 to go in a fast-moving first period here at the CMA. Not quite a capacity crowd, but holy cow, Coach Bill. We've got to have seven, 800 people in here tonight. They've even got the extra bleachers pulled down over on the far side, and it's standing room only around both ends of the, of the rink here. It's great. I've been coming to this building for about 12 years. First time I can remember a crowd like this in here. They love their green wave, and we love our green wave. Puck is picked up at center by Max Murphy, sends it back into the green wave zone. Green wave after they got called for two, six, too many skaters back in the Chicopee game. Very careful about that line change over there. Meanwhile, Sammy Knight carries in. Centering attempt. Net came off its moorings. Quinn used it for a leverage point, as we've seen so many times before. Faceoff's going to be to his right side. 4.58 to go. And yeah, Greenway being very careful about those line changes. Coach Timmy Petrin on that offense door over there made sure that it wasn't going to happen again tonight, Coach. Those are always tough penalties. It's, it's on the coaching staff, unfortunately, and you want to really limit those kinds of errors in the playoffs. Wrist shot. Quinn got a shoulder on that. I think it was going high. Kaczewski couldn't control. Bauman keeps it in. He gets a wrist shot away, sticked away by Quinn. Buck bounce backed up over the top, and once again, the net came off. You know, these goalies are trained to use the posts as leverage points. Unfortunately, the uh, posts that go into the ice here seem to be a little rounded off, maybe more so than other rinks that we go to. And uh, it's just a hazard of the game, I guess, Bill. Yeah, the pins don't quite catch enough of the ice. Dylan Archer made a nice play there. Gets it back into the Gardner zone. Four and a half to go in the first period. Archer sends it up to Kaczewski, dumps it in. Green Wave going to change on the fly. Puck is all the way down behind the Gardner goal. Brody White with it. Hands it off to Chris Merchant. Loses control. Garvin's got it. Couldn't quite get over to Sammy Knight in time. Battleford in the near corner. Brody Gagne behind the net. Can't control. Merchant looks to backhand it out, goes up into the netting. Faceoff's going to be to the left side of Mark Quinn. 3.49 to go in the first period. It's 1-0, green wave. That Gagne hit, I feel like, really energized both sides in the middle of the game here. And it was going a little back and forth. But now we're seeing green wave again exerting some dominance. Another offensive zone draw. Ethan Bryant. Shot goes high. That's 10. Paulin battles. About five players swinging at that one. Finally, Gardner looks to make the long pass. Bryant again keeps it out of the green wave zone. Barlow passes it up to Boucher. Goes back to Marshall. Boucher got the shot away. Just uh, Ethan Bryant obstructed that just enough. Shot went wide. Bryant engages behind the net. 
He's got two Gardner players there. Lavoine picks up the puck, backhands it around the board. Prusak on his horse. He's got Kaczewski on the right. Just a diving block. Nice defensive play by Gardner. Puck's again in the referee's feet. Jason Smith in the battle in front of the Gardner bench. Kept in at the blue line. Smith, a nice dangle. Couldn't quite finish off. Centering attempt, nobody home. Kept in again by Smith. Mark Quinn got the stick on it, went up into the netting. Faceoff's going to be in the Gardner zone. 2.26 to go. We'd like to say thank you to Mesa Verde Greenfield, located at 10 Fisk Avenue on the web, mesaverdegreenfield.com. Their whole menu's there. Alex Siano, tonight's public address announcer. CPA firm, 377 Main Street. Give Alex a call, 774-6036. Puck goes into the green wave zone. Hunter Smith collects. RJ Grondon drops it for Jurek. Jurek cuts in. Centering attempt. Broken up by Ty Burdett. Burdett's got it behind his own net. Jurek looked to throw a shoulder there. Burdett got out of the way. Two on one for Gardner. Bordeaux makes the save, holds on. Also like to thank Gregory Real Estate for being an underwriter this season on Green Wave Hockey, 82 Federal Street. Give Joe a call, 413-222-9291. Greenfield Savings Bank, 400 Main Street, on the web at greenfieldsavings.com. Puck back to the point, wrist shot ends, deflected wide. Drew St. Peter, his shot goes through the slot. Brody Gagney looks to get it out of the zone, can't. St. Peter again, another save, Bordeaux. Puck bounced up and he covered. Just in the nick of time. Faceoff's going to be to Josh's left side. Minute 31 to go in the first period of play. We would also like to thank the Terraza Restaurant at the Country Club of Greenfield. Check them out on the web, terrazagreenfield.com and the Balkan Lounge located at 4 Ames Street. Be sure to check them out on Facebook. Jake Jurek sends the puck out of the zone. Garvin carries in. Garvin got the wrist shot away. It's under the goalie. Mark Quinn didn't know where it was. Quick shot there by Garvin. I think it got under his pad, but not enough to go all the way through and into the net. That was, that was a close one. Nobody knew where that was. Including me. And on the other end, Bordeaux makes a great job on that on that save that popped up and he caught. Looks like we're getting a penalty as well. Yeah, I saw the referee signal roughing. I know uh, it looked like Jake Jurek got punched in the head, but he retaliated uh, on the side of the net there. So it looks like Hunter Barlow, his second trip to the box tonight, and Jake Jurek both sitting for two for roughing. are going to be coincidental minors, so the teams will still play five on five for this last minute 18 in the first 42 seconds of the second period. Lavoine hooked on the play, spun out. Paulin, nice low shot, kicked out by Quinn. Puck sent back around. Kevin Bauman wrists it in. Ooh, Lavoine got the stick on that, almost tried to tip it in. Kaczewski. Back to Kevin Bauman. Back up the boards, Kaczewski. Looks for the wraparound. Yeah, we've got 36 seconds to go in the first period. One nothing, Green Wave on top in this one. Puck comes back to the blue line. Kevin Bauman gets the shot away. Sticked aside by Quinn. And the puck just knocked over Bauman's stick. Goes the length of the ice. Race for it. Paulin wins. He's got Jackson Decker battling him. Sends it back around the boards. 
Shot from the blue. Oh, Bordeaux never saw it. Shot from the point came through a screen and talk about right place at the right time, Bill. That's some good positioning by Bordeaux. He squared up to the shooter. It was out at the top of his crease, which is important because that could have just snuck in if he was off his line. Kuczewski wins that battle. Carries in. Oh, he's knocked right. Holy mackerel. Knocked the door right open. Trevor Kuczewski, between him and Brody Gagne, they got bullseyes on them tonight. Well, they're the type of players that can get under an opposition skin, and I understand why they Gardner team is going to be going after people because they move their legs and they get things done in their offensive zone. But Shot right off the faceoff by Prusak. We saw that work for Trevor Seidel Poirier for Chicopee last week. Four seconds to go. No penalty on that bruising hit. And that's the end of the first period of play. 15 minutes in the books here at the CMA in Greenfield. The packed CMA in Greenfield. Team skate off, it's one nothing Green Wave. Any comments, Coach Bill? Well, they got out early. I think that was a key to the Green Wave game is get an early goal. You know when you've got a goalie that uh, you're going to be playing against that really leads their team, then you want to try to solve that riddle early. And I think they did that with 13 shots to Gardner seven in the first. There's a lot of good offensive possession by Green Wave. I think you saw the two strategies of the two different teams there. Green Wave, you saw deep forecheck puck possession. I thought that they did a really good job of winning those 50-50 puck battles in the corner. And then you saw Gardner's strategy of playing it back and kind of waiting to come out on the counter with a quick pass, maybe try to get an odd man rush, which is where I saw two of their chances. But good period so far for Green Wave, up one nothing. It's just right where you want to be. Yeah, it, it really seemed like the, the Green Wave carried a lot of the play in that first period. But like you said, some of the uh, momentum switched temporarily on those odd man rushes. Gardner, I remember uh, vividly, had a beautiful two-on-one opportunity. Ethan Bryant broke that one up. So uh, Green Wave really playing solidly at both ends of the ice so far. Yeah, I've been very impressed with their work ethic and their hustle and their down low play. They've been getting some good point shots, a couple of tips. And defensively, they're not letting Gardner get behind them too often. When they do, they've been able to shut it down with good goaltending from Bordeaux. Good hitting by both teams. They both seem pretty physical, evenly matched in that front. Yeah, Gardner uh, definitely the, the, the bigger hits, the Ryan Reeves type hits so far. Uh, Green Wave does not ordinarily play that type of hockey. Uh, it's not that they are intimidatable, if I may create a word there, but uh, more often than not, Green Wave's speed is what contributes to their success. I agree, Lou. It's not about the punishing check. I mean, while that gets the fans excited, right, you open a door on the, on the wall there, people get fired up about it. But ultimately, hits are about winning the puck and getting possession and making something happen down low on the forecheck or breaking up a play in the defensive zone. The big hits fans like and it makes the crowds cheer, but I think in the long run, smarter puck and body play is what is gonna win the game for Green Wave. Well, uh, and I don't think we have to look too much farther than carrying the flow of the play out there that really Green Wave was more opportunistic about setting up in the Gardner zone than Gardner was able to set up in the Greenfield zone. Uh, you know, you can call it momentum, call it what you will, but those are the battles that are going to uh, eventually wear down the opposition. Yeah, quite right. If, it, if we look at the, the shots in a little bit more depth, two of Gardner's shots were in the slot and low against Bordeaux on an odd man rush. 
whereas Green Wave had six down in the slot with high, like a higher scoring uh, opportunities, and that's where they got their goal was in down low as well. And you, I think that represents how Green Wave were able to set up and maintain possession, and then they're looking for a centering pass from the down in the corners, or they cycle it back up high and get a shot up there, and that takes puck possession and time in the opponent's zone to do that. Well, I, I saw an interview with Ryan Strom of the Rangers, not to make this Ranger, Ranger heavy, Coach Bill. Former Islander. Former Islander. Um, and he said the part of the Rangers' offensive problems now is the inability to get the greasy goals. And uh, Coach Adam and I have talked frequently about the greasy goals. And Lavoine's goal fit that bill to a T, camped out in the slot, had two bodies wrapped around him, and still managed to put the biscuit in the basket for the lead. That's right. Those are the goals. Those are playoff goals. Those are this time of year. When we get to this part of the season, I mean, how many shots does a goalie see over the course of a season? They are ready for those far shots. We saw Bordeaux, great positioning. That's trained. That's practiced over the course of a season. And so those types of goals become far rarer as the season goes on, especially in a high-stakes elimination game like this. The goals that are going to get scored then are the goals that are down low where there's a scramble and something is broken down. And that, again, takes the puck that takes puck possession and puck pressure like Green Wave have been showing. Yeah, that's a good point. And goaltending has become such a scholarly position, if you will. Uh, a lot of goalie schools, goalie camps uh, teach the method now. And it seems that even into the the Franklin County youth programs, you're seeing goalies with save percentages 900 and higher. Uh, I know Josh Bordeaux coming into this game over his last 11, I believe was 911 or 921. Uh, you gave me a number for Mark Quinn earlier. Uh, 936 is his save percentage. So more often than not, if the goaltender gets a good eye on the puck, they're going to make the save. Exactly. And shots from out, far out on the point that are just a clear shot without a body in front or a stick, they're just going to be eaten up. They're just going to get absorbed by the goalie, and then it's going to be a face-off. And then the defensive teams got an opportunity to win that puck and break out. But you got to get those pucks moving in the slot, have to get the defenders to start cheating and losing their markers and get a little bit of inside position like Lavoine did perfectly. He got his shooting hand free by getting his off shoulder into the chest of the defender. That creates space for a player right in the slot, and then it's on his tape, and the goalie doesn't stand a chance then. No, I, I, I couldn't agree more. And those are the goals that are going to win playoff games. Uh, you know, uh, as I said a second ago, most goalies are going to save those shots that they can get their eye on, whether it's the equipment or the training or what have you. Uh, th they are a very successful lot these days. And it's when a puck bounces loose in that, uh, in that red zone that leaves the opportunity and all sorts of chaos can happen. Yeah, it's definitely the biggest revolution in the game of hockey, aside from composite sticks, is goaltending technique and their training. When, um, when I was um, around the Bridgeport Sound Tigers, their goalie coach was Hall of Famer Billy Smith. They had Rick DiPietro and Billy Smith would watch those games. And I talked to him about goaltending and he said that when he started, he didn't have a goaltending coach. That the Islanders employed a figure skater as a skating coach and she helped him with his edge work. But otherwise, it was basically go in the net and stop the puck. And he, as a goalie coach, 30 years after that, in the early 2000s, was saying that he's had to become educated. And that's 30 years ago, or 20 years ago today, and it's evolved that much further even now, where you have kids at the FCHA level with goalie coaches for them, and they're 10 or 11. What, what a great observation. And uh, mentioning Billy Smith, of course, I was lucky enough to see him play for the old Springfield Kings many, many years ago. And uh, 
If you're if you're listening and you're looking to hear something a little different, Billy Smith did an interview on the Spit and Chicklets podcast last June, and uh, for somebody like me, and uh, I'm sure a lot of the people that are listening tonight, just a terrific interview. He he shot straight from the hip, same way he played the position. Bill Smitty was one of a kind, is one of a kind, <laughs> and <laughs> my apologies, Billy Smith and. He is was an excellent is an excellent goaltender coach and somebody with a lot of knowledge and a lot of passion for the game. Yeah, there's no question about that. You see the Green Wave boys ready to come back on the ice. We went a whole ten minutes there, Bill. I, I don't know if that was our intent, but we did. I'd like to say hello to all of our fans and friends, wherever you may be. My buddy Jim down in Holyoke. My new buddy Tom, former South Hadley skater. He's either in South Hadley or West Springfield, one or the other. I know Robin's listening in Agawam. Hello, Robin. Another Jim in West Springfield. Hi, Jim. Uncle Steve. Hi, Uncle Steve. Wish you could be here tonight. And certainly to so many of our Greenway family that are down in Florida. Yes, I'm envious. I think we had uh, we had a special day today. It hit 40 degrees up here, so I'm it's not gonna, I'm not going to complain much. Worried I'd get a sunburn going walking the dog. <laughs> I'd also like to make a shout out to uh, Mohawk Trail students who are listening along at UMass and attending the game. To all of the students and student athletes that are attending from all the different schools, nothing really brings out. The community like a hockey game and it's really a thrill to see so many people and know that so many people are listening and following along at home and uh, I'm glad you mentioned that because I had no idea you know this uh, maybe I was that guy whose VCR used to flash 12 o'clock all the time people have told me that here inside the CMA they're listening to what we're doing so if you're listening to us throw a wave over here we're happy to have you. We're happy to entertain you. I hope we're entertaining you. I'm having a good time. How are you doing, Lou? This this is as good as it gets. It's true. Playoff it's, hockey. As good as it gets. And uh, I made my sprint for the ice on my uh, wretched old knees last Thursday night. Uh, it wasn't until I heard somebody listening to what I said the last few seconds that I, I had no idea. I just, green wave, green wave, green wave. Um, in another lifetime, I learned that in uh, in another sports industry. We'll leave that alone. That was such an exciting final, um, and it was really thrilling to watch online and see Green Wave come back and get the win. Second period about to start. Boys are coming out on the ice right now. All right, so boys are going to get their stretches in. Legs warmed up a little bit. So before we get to hockey action, I'm going to say thank you to our underwriters on GCTV and FCAT this season. Greenfield Cooperative Bank. They're on the web, greenfieldcoopbank.com. Give them a call, 877-682-0334. Mesa Verde Greenfield. Best Mexican food around, 10 Fisk Avenue. MesaVerdeGreenfield.com. Alex Ciano, CPA firm located at 377 Main Street, 413-774-6036. Regary Real Estate, office at 82 Federal Street in Greenfield, 413-222-9291. Greenfield Savings Bank, 400 Main Street, greenfieldsavings.com. Terraza Restaurant at the Country Club of Greenfield. On the web, terrazagreenfield.com and the Balkan Lounge, 4 Ames Street in Greenfield. Be sure to check them out on Facebook. Bill, I think I heard you say that the shots on goal in the first period were 13-7 to in favor of the Green Wave. That's correct, Lou. Two high-quality scoring chances for Gardner to Green Wave 6. I love I love the advanced stats that you provide, and thank you for doing it so often this season. Oh, it's been my pleasure. 
All right, underway. Green Wave wins the faceoff. Carried into the zone by Eric Amblo. He's the leading goal scorer for Gardner, or tied for the team lead anyway. He's got 11 on the season. Quick battle down in the far corner. Kaczewski spun around again. Ty Burdett carries back in. Kevin Bauman steps in front of him. Bauman reverses. Gardner getting physical right out of the gate here. Lavoine over to Kaczewski. Tips it into the Gardner zone. Picked up by Lavoine. Pucks in his feet. Lavoine returns the favor to Burdett. Sends him flying. Pruzak. Put the puck through the feet of Eric Amblo. Sent back in by Kevin Bauman. Brody White has it for Gardner. Jason Smith tried to get fancy. Amblo said no. Play was offside. Faceoff's going to be right outside the penalty boxes. Two players are back on back on their benches now. Jaden Patel and Jake Jurek took those roughing penalties towards the end of the first period. Matt Garvin on the draw for the Green Wave. Wins it back to Hunter Smith. Smith sends it up in front of the Green Wave bench. Garvin has it. Finds Brody Gagne. Gagne's got room. Nice poke check there by Matt Marshall. Puck sent in. Garvin again collects. He goes through traffic. Leaves it for Sammy Knight. Knight centering attempt. That's picked off. Hunter Barlow goes the other way. Shot goes in. And around the net. Matt Garvin again. Clear center. Quick shot away. Gloved by Quinn. Faceoff's going to be to Quinn's right side. 13-14 to go in the second period of play. 1-0 Green Wave on top. Big crowd tonight at the CMA. That was the first shot of the period. A little point shot there. Pollen can't control at the blue line. Carries down behind his own net. Pass for Kaczewski. Blocked. Got it up to Lavoine. A little careless passing through the neutral zone. Picked up by Gardner. Shot goes wide. Centering pass was picked up by Matt Lavoine. Sent the length of the ice. That's no icing. Kaczewski applying the pressure there. Paulin comes in, collects a loose puck, sends it back down into the corner. Prusak on the forecheck with Matt Marshall. Hunter Barlow looking for the desperation clear. That was blocked. Puck comes back over this side. Paulin goes behind his own net. Unusual set of passes there. Ends up down to the Gardner goal line. Barlow with the long clearing attempt. Just barely made it for icing. 12.02 to go in the second period. Played a little sloppy there, Bill. It's very choppy. It looks like Gardner came out with the intent to use their physicality to kind of throw Green Wave off. And it's worked to some degree with some choppy passes, but going to just have to work through that. Jay Croto out on the draw for the Green Wave. Zach Boucher carries across the red line. Sends a long one in. Bordeaux gloves that. Leaves it for Dylan Archer. Archer sends it around. He's got Brody Gagne. Croto banks it off the glass into the Gardner zone. That's not going to make it for icing. Gagne looked to make the pass. I don't know. I think I would have shot there, Bill. It's a shooting spot. Kevin Bauman. Solid check on Ty Burdett. Battle behind the green wave net. Puck comes back out of the zone. Archer. 
Looks to reverse. Puck hit the referee. Centering attempt picked off by the Green Wave. Kaczewski breaks down the right side. Centering attempt. Oh! Kutch threaded the needle. Found Prusak on the far side. Quinn got the stick on it. Puck went up into the netting. Big save by Mark Quinn. Beautiful no-look pass by Kaczewski to find Prusak on the off post there, on the far post. Only a quick stick by the goalie prevented a goal there. Clearing attempt by Gardner. That's gone for icing. 10.41 to go in the second period. Yeah, that was a heck of a pass. And like you say, there's no way he saw Pru over on that left wing. There's just no way he saw him there. But somehow he knew the puck was going to get to him. Good chemistry. Prusak wins the draw forward. He's in a battle. Barlow sizes things up for Gardner. Jason Smith got his boot on it, kept it in the zone. Lavoine covers him at the point, gets the shot away. Quinn, stick save, puck rolled up on him, he covered. Faceoff's going to be to his left side. 10 17 to go in the second period. Good play by Smith to get a foot on that and get that deep, and then ended up with a shot. More offensive zone possession by a green wave. I was talking to Coach Duclos earlier, and uh, he's been very impressed with Jason Smith's effort. He thought he had one of his best games of varsity player last week in that Chickabee game. Jason got the shot away there. Quinn put the glove on that. Another faceoff in the Gardner zone. Can almost sense the electricity here. It's, uh, where we're stationed, it's in the student section, so uh, there's a lot of chirping going on here. But they're, they're ready to pop for a Green Wave goal, Bill. They are. They're packed. They're practicing their, practicing their cheering down below us. Whoa. Ethan Brandt got the shot away, bounced off the backboards. Quinn went down to cover. As he leaned into it, that net came off its moorings. One more faceoff in the Gardner zone. Faceoff's going to be to Mark Quinn's left side. Skates that off a little, loosens himself up. Might have got banged up a little bit in the process. Jurek wins the draw back. Ethan Bryant bangs it up the boards. He's blocked by Max Murphy. Puck goes down behind the Gardner net. Sent around by Barlow. Paulin keeps it in. And that's going to go for icing. I'd have to say there's no momentum at all so far. But... Uh, a little over five minutes into the second period. No, as freewheeling as the first was at times, this has been kind of slow and sludgy with so many icings. Gardner gets the puck out of the zone. Bryant backhands it in. Jurek gets onside, stays on the four check. Nice play by RJ Grondon on the far side. Found Paulin. Paulin sends it in. Jurek spins out behind the Gardner net. Bryant sends it back down deep. Grondon on the far side. Look to play the body instead of the puck. Poisington carries out. Got across center. Sends it in to the Green Wave zone. Paulin. A long cross ice feed. Boucher carries for Gardner. Bordeaux save. Plays very ragged here. Paulin looking to settle things down. His long feed for Garvin, bounced over his stick, not going to be icing. Picked up by Burdett. Gagne looks to keep the puck in the Gardner zone.
Burdett sends it back down behind the green wave net. Bounces out to the blue line. Puck is loose. Puck comes out, it's Sammy Knight. Shots blockered away by Quinn. A quick release by Sammy Knight. Oh, beautiful centering attempt. Gagne couldn't get the composite on it. Gagne's back in the corner. He's cross-checked in the head, no call. Amblo goes cross ice. Archer sends it back into the Gardner zone. 100 footer, stopped by Bordeaux. Archer picks it up. Clearing attempt goes right on the Gardner stick. Blocker save. Nice block by Kevin Bauman. Archer's clearing attempt picked off by Gardner. Got the nice shot away. Bordeaux turned it aside, but Bauman was there to pick up the rebound. Kaczewski. Had Prusak breaking on the left side. Couldn't quite get it to him that time. Pru looks to go cross ice. Oh, Kaczewski almost picked up the loose puck. A lot of no-look passes here, Bill. They are. They're searching for that next goal. Lavoine cuts in. Quinn made the save. Kaczewski's got it. Oh, his shot hit the outside of the net. Prusak. Blocker save and a beauty. Jason Smith, nice move. Kaczewski behind the net. Puck is still there. That just was complete desperation by Gardner. You know, where we were talking that it seemed like nobody wanted the puck at all. All of a sudden, the Green Wave just put the retro rockets on and had a couple of great scoring chances there. And that's, a, I think Gardner is looking to slow the game down, make it sludgy take the speed of green wave out but if play opens up like it does like that we get a good break out of our zone then all of a sudden Gardner's really on their heels as we just saw right there with three really good chances. Croto wins a face off forward. Sammy Knight's got it. Backhands it. Gloved by Quinn. Face off's going to be to Mark Quinn's right side. Down to 6.03 to go in the second period of play. Jake Croto once again on the draw. Croto wins it back just between his two defenders. Ethan Bryant goes back to collect. He's got two Gardner guys chasing him. Kept in at the blue line. Gagne sent it out of the zone temporarily. Paulin banks it off the boards. That was carried back in. That was offside. 5.40 to go in the second period. And as quickly as the green wave had turned the momentum, kind of got caught on their heels there, Bill. They were going a little lackadaisical into their own zone, and Gardner had two men on that puck, and all of a sudden when Ethan Bryant turned around, there were two men on him, and his clearing pass just went to the wall, but they, if Gardner keeps it in, they can generate some points. But here comes Bauman. Bauman carries. Carries with a purpose. Lavoine behind the net, centering attempt. Picked off by Amblo, two on one the other way. Shots blocked by Archer. Bruzak plays on side, centering. Oh, Kaczewski just was obstructed by Matt Marshall. That goes the length of the ice. That's going to be icing. Seems to be an all or nothing momentum type game here now, Bill. Yep, it's two, three whistles, frozen puck, and then a quick spring shot. It's been an uneven period. And let's not forget, scores only one nothing green wave here, so they, they can't be lulled to sleep at all, even for a moment. Jason Smith sees some open ice. He takes advantage of it, carries in. 
Puck is knocked off his stick. Tim Petron with a nice save over at the Green Wave bench. Prusak was ready to come off. Petron took the next guy, grabbed him right by the shoulder pad. Puck was deflected by Gardner into their own zone. Once again, play right in front of the Green Wave bench. Now they can make a change. Third time's a charm. Wow. Gagne on the four check. Spun Burdett around. Burdett reverses. Finds Jaden Patel. Garvin backhanded it into Patel's face mask. Merchant loses control. The center stripe. Sammy Knight on the left side. Oh! Nice poke check by Burdett. Jaden Patel carries in. He's knocked off the puck by Hunter Smith. Patel's the other leading goal scorer for Gardner. He's got 11. Smith backhands it in. Off the boards. Long bomb banks up off the boards. Went straight up over the net. Looks like the faceoff's going to be referees are discussing. Should probably be at center ice, I think. Unless they say it was deflected, I'm not sure. I, I was busy watching Jason Smith wrapped up with the Gardner defender at the blue line. And it must have been deflected. Faceoff's going to be to the right side of Mark Quinn. Mark Quinn asking the questions. Other linesmen dropped the puck while he was in mid-discussion. That could have been chaotic. Wisman sticks it. Oh! Puck just went through Jarek's feet. Banked off the boards, kept in by Paulin. Another stick saved by Quinn. Jurek. Backhand pass. Wisman got a stick on it. Grandin, nice centering pass. Nobody home. Murphy for Gardner carries in. Bordeaux got the blocker on that, up into the netting. Faceoff's going to be to Josh Bordeaux's left side. 2.42 to go in the second period of play. I don't know, Bill. It's all or nothing this period. Yeah, Green Wave got to learn to assert themselves more and get their game going more. I feel like that they have flashes. I mean, they certainly are out-chancing Gardner by a considerable amount here in the second, but doesn't feel like it's been their period as much as you would want. Archer sends it around the boards. Prusak, nice pass to Kaczewski. Kaczewski's got some... Well, he had some room, but very quickly Cullen White got in the middle of that. Prusak, nice job keeping it in. He got knocked down for his efforts. Quinn actually tied that one up with his blocker on the side of the net. 2.15 to go in the second period. 1-0 Green Wave. Hunter Smith keeps it in. Matt Lavoin collects. Carries it in. Hunter Barlow deflected that onto his own, uh, into his goaltender's own catch glove. The crowd is letting everybody know their opinions about Central and Western Mass towns. The, the Green Wave fans are having their voices heard. They're, you're right, Lou. They're definitely ready, ready for a goal. Kevin Bauman wins that battle. Jake Jurek comes back the other way. He's hauled down. No call. Holy smokes. Sammy Knight with it. Oh, puck goes right between Gar uh, Garvin skates. Excuse me. Banked off the boards by Merchant. 
Paulin, nice move. Goes back the other way, sent in deep by Patel. Sammy Knight breaks down the left side. Nice defensive play by Bauman. Wow, that was a great defensive play. He's been playing a very good game tonight. A lot of good work in his own zone game, the puck out, and that was an excellent stick check. Gets that play just that half second off sides and freezes whatever momentum Gardner had right there. Real heady play by the captain there. Prusak out for the faceoff. Jonah Hoisington on the other side for Gardner. Smith sends it up, finds Matt Lavoine, plays on side. Hoisington had it, lost his stick though. Lavoine. Quinn put the stick on that on his own. Goes back the other way. Murphy. Shouldered into the corner by Bauman. Wow, that was crazy. Jason Smith. It's a two on two, gets a shot away. Nice glove saved by Quinn. Another great play by Bauman. Springs Smith. He takes it nearly end to end. Good hard shot. Loved by Quinn, but another offensive zone faceoff. 30 seconds left in this second period. We've got Jake Jurica on the draw for the Green Wave. He's out there with Matt Garvin and Sammy Knight. Paulin and Bauman on the points. Battle in the far corner. Gardner loses control. Puck is loose again. Down to 10 seconds to go. That one goes up into the netting. Faceoff is going to be two. Mark Quinn's left side. Seven seconds on the clock. Green wave pressure just causes Gardner to just toss that puck like a hot potato right out of the zone and into the netting. Shane Prusak on the draw. Both centers were tossed there. The referee on the far side did not approve. Garvin centering attempt is blocked. Puck bounces! Just up and over. A score? A scoreless. I don't know, I just saw AD Mike Kaczewski walk by. He said something for the, uh, for the student section. I think he was cheering on the green wave, perhaps. Uh, but as I was starting to say, scoreless second period, Bill. Holy smokes. Yes, holy smokes indeed. The shots would indicate that Green Wave were had their way in that period, 11-5 again. But less quality scoring chances for Green Wave. I only see two that were really in the scoring in the slot there. And Gardner had one quality scoring chance. You say 11-5 were those shots? Correct, 11-5. Yeah, that, that certainly sounds like the, the flow of play there. So that give us a two-period total of 24 to 12. So a nearly two to one, uh, two, a two to one um, shot advantage for Green Wave. But in that second period, I don't know about you, but I felt like that the, the flow of the play was very uneven. And I think that that was an advantage for Gardner in that period. I, I felt that Gardner came out very physical that first minute. Uh, sent Kaczewski flying, I believe. Uh, and of course, in the first period, had, uh, had mauled Brody Gagne. They came out looking to assert themselves in the second period. I think that led to some of that really almost dysfunctional play that we saw. 
that uh, really for probably the first half of that second period, there, there was no sustained attack at either end of the ice. No, it seemed like Gardner were happy to be down one and just kind of ice the puck and keep the pressure out of their zone. And when Green Wave could find a really good breakout pass and get some speed and transition through the neutral zone, then they were really dangerous. And we saw that a couple of times. I saw three really good sustained efforts by Green Wave down low. A lot of centering passes that were well placed, but nobody there to receive that. Um, so I thought that they were, they were near to something in that second period, but um, score remains one nothing during during this intermission, and you know that's something uh, you want to improve on. I think in a playoff game, you want to get the crowd in. The crowd's been taken out of the game a little bit. Third period, you want to get another goal, give a little cushion, get the crowd something to cheer about. Well, I I think that by really falling into Gardner's game rather than their own game the Green Wave just wasn't able to really get anything going there were a few spurts there where they certainly looked like they were going to score a goal maybe two but uh, Mark Quinn came into this game with a stellar reputation between the pipes for the Wildcats and he's certainly lived up to that so far he has They've, he's been very impressive in limiting the rebounds um Green Wave have been effective at winning the loose puck and keeping possession. And I think that building on that will help solve this goalie problem and get them on the board here in the third. Well, again, I think uh, I think a big component of that is going to be the, the ability to really camp out front and get that greasy goal. There were a couple of really good centering passes in the late stages of the second period, but there was just nobody there to backdoor the play and it just made it a, a little bit challenging but certainly uh, even though the ice surface here at the CMA is not the biggest in the league you can't be everywhere all the time no and I think that you can look at those centering passes one of two ways one you can look at it kind of in a negative light that they're not connecting and somebody's not at the end of that but you can also look at it in a really positive manner because you're getting to see a lot of creative opportunities being produced and we just need to see a player make that connection you need just one right so you ask these questions of the goal you ask these questions of Gardner how do we solve this goaltender and those centering passes are I think a key to that and it's just making a little adjustment there in the attack zone maybe get Lavoie camped out there maybe create a little bit more sustained pressure like we saw in the first and then I think those start to click, and all of a sudden it looks almost easy. Gardner's got some big bodies on their side. There's no question about that. And to your point, Bill, to see Matt Lavoine or Derek Wisman not, not do anything other than be that big, strong body that they are to, uh, to really take ownership of that zone in front of the, in front of the goaltender uh, it could be a turning point in the game. Definitely, it's, it's one opportunity among many of Green Wave's arsenal that they can use to potentially solve this. I thought Trevor's hustle w was evident again in the second period and that he was able to make things coming down the wing. Prusak's stick handling was also kind of, was creating these spaces and these chances. And those are things that you just want as a coaching staff to build upon. Accentuate that in between the inter in, during this intermission Talk about those, play up those positives, get people to feel in that bounce and step, and then you hope that you come out in the third and really dictate the play to Gardner. Well, and uh, to your point, Green Wave has not really failed anywhere on the ice. It's just a little bit of puck luck at this point that passes aren't connecting, uh, people aren't where you would expect them to be, and uh, I really think that if they're able to solve Mark Quinn early in the third period, that the momentum is finally going to really settle in for the Green Wave for the remainder of the period. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with that assessment, Lou. I mean, looking at the stats for Gardner, they, they had five registered shots. Only three were in zone and two were down low. So 
Green, like you were saying, to your point, Green Wave are playing an effective game. It's a tight playoff game, and that's how these are going to go. That's how these kinds of games play out, like we were talking at the end of the first period, with the way goaltenders are, the systems that coaches employ also help that. And Green Wave get their feet under them, start skating north and south again, might see that puck luck return through their hard work again. That something that's a real key element, I think, to Green Wave identity. Well, and I really like that you said that about their North-South game because really the, the crux of this game, regardless of level in 2022, is it's a North-South game. You have to have the skills to play East-West when you need to, but really it's a North-South game. And when the Green Wave have been able to execute that, they have, they have by far been the dominant team on the ice. That's right. They play to their strengths, playing that type of puck pursuit, high pressure game. It leads to the opportunities that Coach Bouchard and his coaching staff have really been working with his student athletes to develop and really refine. And it's almost there. We'll see what they do here in the third and how they make these adjustments. The game is about adjustments. You see Gardner made an adjustment in the second period. Now Green Wave they're going to be making adjustments too. Coach, we did it again. Went for another 10. Zamboni takes a spin and doors are closing. Green so, wave is coming out. So before we get uh, too far along, one more time, I would like to thank our underwriters for this whole season of Green Wave Hockey here on GCTV and FCAT. Referee put the net right in front of the door that the Green Wave come out. <laughs> uh, anyway, thank you to our underwriters, Greenfield Cooperative Bank. They are on the web, greenfieldcoopbank.com. Give them a call, 877-682-0334. Mesa Verde of Greenfield, yum. 10 Fisk Avenue on the web, mesaverdegreenfield.com. Alex Ciano, CPA, 377 Main Street in Greenfield, 413 Seven seven four six zero three six. Regary Real Estate office at eighty two Federal Street in Greenfield four one three two 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 nine two nine one. Greenfield Savings Bank located at four hundred Main Street in Greenfield. On the web at greenfieldsavings.com. Terraza Restaurant at the Country Club of Greenfield. They. Also, we're on the web at terrazagreenfield.com. And don't forget the Balkan Lounge, located at 4 Ames Street. Be sure to check them out on Facebook. It's Speaking making me hungry. Oh, I know, right? Speaking of Facebook, don't forget to check out the Green Wave Facebook page, Greenfield Green Wave Hockey on Facebook. And certainly greenwavehockey.com. I don't think we ventured into this territory, Bill, but the winner of this game gets to play Saturday out in Kingston, Massachusetts, a 3 p.m. tilt at the Bog. Against Norwell. The Norwell Clippers, who are the number one ranked team in the Maya Power Rankings. So some big skates to fill in that one. Yes, I see that they're 18 and one and outscored their opposition something like 108 to 26. So it will be a fun tilt for the winner of this game. That's why we play them. I mean, it's playoff hockey. It's a challenge. Well, you're exactly right. And for any team in this tournament, preliminary round aside, they've got to win a minimum of five games to become state champions. And if you look at this the, uh, the way that I do, every one of these games is equivalent to a game seven. Exactly. There's little room for error, and everything has to be intentional. But this is why you practice. This is why you put in the time so that things like what you have to do on the ice become second memory, and then it allows you to compete at a high level because you're so well trained, you're ingrained into the system, you know what you have to do without thinking about it. Ready for third period action, Shane Prusak on the draw for the Green Wave, wins it back to MJ Paulin. Kevin Bauman banked it off the boards. Gardner picked up the puck, sent it deep.
Colin White centers, nobody home. Kaczewski thrown up. Bordeaux with a save. I heard the goalpost, but I think that was the stick of Colin White as he circled the net. Bordeaux smothered it. Faceoff's going to be to Josh Bordeaux's right side. Shane Prusak on the defensive zone draw for the Green Wave. Bauman. Kaczewski's intercepted. Bordeaux, nice save. Paulin sends it around this way. And Bordeaux gloves that one. Big shot from Brody White. Faceoff's going to be to Josh's left side. Bill? Three straight shots by Gardner there to open, open the third period. Green Wave making the line change, making the adjustment. Garvin wins it back. Picked up by Patel. And Jason Smith's going to go for holding. And Smith got up. Smith's stick got up under the arms of the Gardner player, and Gardner player fell forward, taking the stick with him. Smith left standing without a stick. Guilty as charged. Hard to explain that one. No amount of head shaking is going to change the referee's mind on that one. First look at the Green Wave PK tonight. A Prusak, Kaczewski, Bauman, and Paulin. Bauman immediately sends it the length of the ice. Quinn holds. Green Wave get in formation. Croto broke that one up. Puck comes in. Paulin. Can't clear the zone. Bordeaux save. We've got Eric Amblo got that shot away from the blue line. Playing defense on the power play. He's played defense most of the season, but uh, Coach Frenier was saying that uh, he's also had been playing a lot of forward, which he's been playing most of the night tonight. So definitely an offensive threat out there. Pollen can't get it past Patel. Amblo from the point. Big block by Pruzak. That one stung. Quinn the long pass. Kuczewski engages at the blue line. Paulin sends it the length of the ice. Bouncer on net, steered aside by Quinn. Down to one minute to go in the penalty to Jason Smith. Paulin the big bomb from the blue line. That's saved by Quinn. Gardner straight up, center ice. Croto got a stick on that. He sends one in. That's gloved by Quinn. 40 seconds to go in the Gardner power play. Barlow down the right side. He cuts in. Might have hit the side of the net. I couldn't tell. And the puck bounces up over Amblo's stick out into the neutral zone. His shot goes wide. Comes all the way around. Can't be kept in at the point. Pruzak, he's all alone. What a save. What a save by Mark Quinn on Shane Pruzak's breakaway. Left pad came all the way out. Stopped that as Prusak went to his backhand to finish that off. And the green waver back to full strength. Holy cow. Put a star next to that one. Barlow through the neutral zone. It's the bomb away. That goes wide. Dylan Archer. Soft pass behind the net. That's a little dangerous. Bauman with Decker. Rondon loses it. Nice play by Lavoine to get the puck over on the far side. Jason Smith. Smith looking to get fancy. No time for that. Green Wave on their heels there for a minute. Shane Prusak on that breakaway. What a save by Mark Quinn. 
Got the crowd out of their feet. He had a clear, clear 60 foot breakaway. A lot of good stick handling. Forehand, backhand, forehand, back to backhand. Left pad at the post. Bordeaux got the glove on that. Blue line shot by Brody White. Looks like the goaltender's got some issues with Chris Merchant. Might have hacked him on the way past. Merchant on the draw for Gardner. Matt Garvin for Green Wave. Sammy Knight goes far side. Gagne lets his line mates catch up to him. He carries in. Spun around behind the Gardner net. Centers it. Nice defensive play by Ty Burdett. Broke that one up. Matt Garvin was waiting right in, that, right in that greasy spot that we were talking about, Bill. That's right. He got just in between Garvin and the puck. Just enough to... Bauman couldn't keep it in at the blue line. Sammy Knight's going to have to get out of the zone. Gardner recalibrates in the meantime. Garvin, oh, he's tripped. Back referee saw that all the way and made the call immediately. I'm loving it. This is good for a green wave. They've been challenging a little bit. PK sometimes can energize a team, give them a little bit of common unity that gets them going and now they get to take that momentum onto the power play. And that's going to be Chris Merchant sitting for two. Second look at the Green Wave power play tonight. Paulin finds Kaczewski in the corner. Kaczewski dumps it behind the net. Bauman his shot's blocked. Bounces towards the net. Quinn ties it up. Green Wave with some immediate pressure on the power play. Bowman with a shot. Prusak collects that puck over and to the left of Quinn. Paulin. Another glove saved by Quinn. Minute 38 remain in the Green Wave power play. 10-16 to go in the third period of play. 1-0 Green Wave on top. Paulin got the shot away once again. Quinn Smothers. Their body's down low and at both posts, but nobody's getting in front and screening Quinn so he cannot see that hard shot by Paulin. Prusak once again on the draw. Once again back to Paulin. Another shot. Oh, just deflected wide. Bauman keeps it in on the left side, sends it up. Gloved by Gardner. Pollen sends it back over to Prusak. Pru carries in. Another trip right in the slot. Looks like there's no call on the play. No call. Yeah, Kaczewski was... Uh, yeah, the referee wanted to come and face it off outside the blue line. Senior official said, no, 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 back in, in the Gardner zone. Minute 14 remain on the Green Wave power play. One minute Kaczewski was standing up, the next minute he was in the net. That didn't happen by accident. Puck goes behind the Gardner net. Paulin. Looks for an opening, can't find one. Gardner, Gardner player lost their stick. Paulin. Just kept it in, nicely done. Once again, sent in deep. Quinn decides to settle things down. 39 seconds in the Greenway power play. 9.17 to go in the third period. 1-0 Green Wave. Coach Bouchard putting some fresh legs out. PP2 now. Wisman, Garvin, and Knight. 
with Smith and Smith on the points. Jason Smith. Kind of a lackadaisical. But that one went under Bordeaux's stick. Holy smokes. Hunter Smith carries. He gains the Gardner zone. Reverses. Oh! Puck bounced in the crease. I'm going to guess the net came off. Yeah, it did. Hunter Smith went an end-to-end -end rush. That kind of speed is what Green Wave needed to do, really take the game to Gardner. Use that speed, use that team strength against these bigger bodies. Nice poke check by Smith. Sammy Knight spun around in the high slot. Gardner sends it the length of the ice. That's going to kill their penalty. Team's back at full strength. Hunter Smith looking to make some magic happen. Find Sammy Knight. Linesman signaled a delayed offside. Gardner had the puck, though. They blew the whistle. 8.29 to go in the third period of play. Green Wave had some chances on that power play. Wildcats equal to the task. Marshall behind his own net. Lavoine. Battle at the blue line. Plays onside. Prusak finds Kaczewski. And that one's going to be icing. Faceoff's going to be back in the Green Wave zone. 7.46 to go in the third period of play. Play got a little physical right down in front of us, Bill. That's right. The Green Wave using their physical strength along the boards to try to win that puck and get it out of the zone. Kaczewski a little unlucky on that pass. Gardner wins the draw. Garvin looked to unload the cannon. Shot was uh, blocked by the stick of Matt Marshall. Puck is loose. Paulin chips one back in. Centering attempt. Paulin stretches, keeps it in. Sends the puck back in. Garvin behind the net. He's shouldered off. Cullen White carries out for Gardner. Long shot, blockered by Bordeaux. Ties up the rebound. Faceoff's going to be two. Josh's left side. 7.08 to go in the third period. Seeing the benches shorten a little bit for Green Wave. Getting a lot of Prusak, especially in these key defensive draws. You'll see him more and more as the game goes on. Prusak won that. Smith had already come up. Wasn't right quite there to get the puck. Did manage to get it around to Kaczewski. Long pass finds Prusak. Prusak with a nice follow through. I think his stick hit the blocker of Mark Quinn. Hunter Smith couldn't quite keep it in on the Gardner blue line. Peru between the feet. Finds Lavoine, sends Lavoine into the corner. Shoulder on shoulder battle. Gardner comes back the other way, three on two. Bordeaux save. Kaczewski, nice block. Burdett carry the puck. Nice poke check, Jason Smith again. Here goes Jake Jurek. Garvin got the shot away, pad save, Quinn. Puck bounces straight up in the air. Jurek again, circles. Just a little bit in front of Matt Garvin. Centering attempt was blocked by Brody White. Yeah, 
And Gardner sends the puck the length of the ice. That's probably their best move, Bill. Yeah, great pressure by Green Wave. Jerk with a late shot down low there as well. That was three really good quality scoring chances on that last rush. I liked what Garvin did there where he took that shot and that rebound then led to another scoring chance. So sometimes shooting at the puck, shooting the puck, there we go. Oh. Lavoine with the quick shot. Quinn made the save but couldn't control the rebound. Rolled off his arm. Kept in by Lavoine. MJ Pollen backhands it into the Gardner zone. Batted down by Kocheski. Ethan Bryant banks it off the boards, gets it back into the neutral zone. Gardner D plays catch. Intercepted by Lavoine. It's knocked off. Prusak, oh, what a save, Quinn. Prusak saw the loose puck, got in there. Quinn got the right pad on it. Kocheski looked to send it back deep, didn't go though. Pollen gets across the red line, sends it down behind the Gardner net. 4.35 to go in the third period. Bryant couldn't keep it in. Over to Sammy Knight. Finds Garvin. Gar Garvin was mauled on that one. Puck comes around. Pollen keeps it in. Bauman back out there. He carries in deep. Score! Kevin Bauman makes it 2 nothing Green Wave. Bauman was along the half wall like he does so often. Got the shot away. Quinn got an arm on it. Rolled up and over into the top corner. It's 2 nothing Green Wave. Huge goal. 4.03 left in the game. And Bauman takes that puck after a lot of extended green wave pressure. And just like you said, Lou, that deflection off of Quinn's arm puts it into the far corner. Now suddenly it changes the landscape of the game. Gardner definitely cannot be happy to be just icing the puck. We saw that desperation was starting to come in and allowed green wave to come into that play. And here we are, 2-0. Prusak at center. Surveys the situation. Big trip behind the play. Long pass connects. Gardner's on side. Bauman working both ends of the ice. Broke that one up nicely. Another great defensive play by Kevin Bauman. Ty Burdett gains the zone. Walks right around Jason Smith. He cuts in. Bordeaux save. Huge save right there. Right pad deflects it into the corner. And that's a delayed offside. Gardner touched in the zone. 2.52 to go in the third period of play. Suddenly we've got that end-to-end -end action that we were wondering what happened to in the second period, Bill. Gardner can't afford to play in a, a tough away game of icing the puck. They've got to open up their game, and that's going to allow for Green Wave to get in and use their speed some more. Bauman with some excellent defensive play right there. Stood a man up, won a puck in the corner. Sammy Knight gets deep in the Gardner zone. Looks for some help. Doesn't need it. same spot Kevin Bauman was rang it off the inside of the top corner of the post it's 3-0 Green Wave that brought everybody out of their, out of, off onto their feet Sammy Knight, what a snipe up in the toy department on the blocker side of Quinn, goes into that blocker side, comes out on the glove side and there's no doubt about that one and all of the nervous energy you can feel leave the building. Fans are more relaxed. 
And the Wildcats are going to take their time out. But, oh my goodness, two, two green wave goals in about a minute and a half there. And uh, Kevin Bauman, we've seen him score from that spot near the half wall, near the faceoff circle earlier this season. Sammy Knight, usually he's right down Broadway. He'll cut back in, but he had the opportunity to get the shot away there, and he certainly did, Bill. <laughs> he took no, no second look on that one. Was up near the blue line in the offensive zone, two men on him, somehow emerges from that with the puck and then manages to take that, walk right in, and shoot it top shelf. Phenomenal goal, couldn't have come at a better time. Now what was a tough 2-0 deficit for Gardner turns into a nearly impossible 3-0 deficit. Well, with 2.37 left on the scoreboard clock, I think desperation time is going to set in. At what point are they going to consider pulling Quinn out? Trying to get the extra attacker. They've got to get something going here. Advanced stats would say three minutes left is about the time that you want to pull a goalie. We're at 2.20 now. Dylan Archer behind his own net for the green wave. Finds Prusak. Prusak backhands it out of the zone. Picked up by Patel. Patel cuts through. A blue line gopher got a hold of him. Bordo, what a save! What a save! Another important save right there. Both defensemen were sucked down low. That left an opening in the low slot there for Gardner, but Bordeaux stacks the pads. That's over. Forget that. Gardner broken up. Bryant bangs it out of the zone. It goes into the Gardner zone. I would have sworn... That was definitely touched by that, a Gardner that, player. That Matt Marshall got a stick on it right in front of his own bench, but the guys who count wearing the stripes said no. Faceoff comes back into the green wave zone. A minute 39 remain in the third period of play. Faceoff to Josh Bordeaux's right side. Pruzak wins it back to Kevin Bauman. Goes up the boards. Kept in at the blue line. Paulin. Little east-west play on the Gardner blue line. Burdett stripped by Sammy Knight. Quinn holds it behind his net. Nice play by Matt Garvin to keep it in. He sends it back down behind the Gardner net. One minute to go in this one. Jurek, pad save, Quinn. And that one goes for icing. 42 seconds left in the third period. Faceoff going to go back down into the Gardner zone. Prusak wins it back. Bauman sends it back in deep. Bauman throws the shoulder. He's done it all tonight. Long pass. It looked like the goalie was. Looked like the goalie was coming out. Amblo and Sammy Knight get a coming together in Green Wave's defensive zone. Amblo initiates it, gets rung up in, uh, by the referee and told to take a seat. 26 seconds to go in the third period. Green Wave go on the power play. Goaltender Quinn's going to have to remain in. He was trying to come out there.
Long pass. Goes the length of the ice. Kevin Bauman carries out, finds R.J. Grandin. Ten seconds to go. Grandin sidestep. Oh, he's... That went knee to knee. R.J. Grandin's down. Dangerous play right there. To Run. Totally uncalled for. To come across that way, Grandin cut away to avoid the check. And at the last minute there... Zach Boucher sticks his knee out on the blue line and takes Grandin down. Good news is, though, Grandin's up. A little, little groggy, definitely probably in a lot of pain, but it's good to see him up on his own accord because that could be a very dangerous play right there. Referee's over spelling out the details to tonight's official scorer, Sean Lavoine. Thank you, Sean. like uh, Amblo might be done for the night. L little, little verbal, I guess. Faceoff is going to be in the Gardner zone. That'll be two men short. Seven seconds up on the clock. I see Benny Given out there. Given on the draw. Wins the draw forward. Garner just holds the puck. Green Wave are going to be playing on Saturday. The team mobs junior goaltender Josh Bordeaux's third career shutout. A tournament shutout. Saturday afternoon, 3 o'clock. The Green Wave have a date with the Norwell Clippers at the Bog in Kingston, Massachusetts. Great period. The type of third period you need. Quell the nerves. Gives the fans something to cheer about. Great momentum going into a big tilt on Saturday. Third period shots. 13 for Green Wave, 9 for Gardner, though they had the early shot advantage for a total of 37 shots for Green Wave with three goals for, and Bordeaux with a 21 save shutout. Several of them real beauties when the game was on the line to keep it, keep the lead. And here comes the handshakes. And that's it for the uh, Gardner Wildcats season. Green Wave. As we said, we'll be playing again on Saturday afternoon. Uh, not sure what the video options are going to be at this point. I know the BOG has Live Barn, so if you have a Live Barn subscription, you can't get out there. And I understand it's a two and a half or a three hour drive. Green Wave almost taking a victory lap. Don't forget, this is the last game of the season here at the CMA. So uh, hats off to the Green Wave student athletes, coaching staff. Of course, I don't want that to sound like I'm patting myself on the back. I'll pat you on the back, Coach Bill. Um, it, it's just been a, a heck of a season, and it's certainly not over yet. No, it's definitely not. It's been a real pleasure to get an extra home game, a playoff game, and a terrific atmosphere here, hearing the Green Wave chant, seeing it a packed house, really makes this a special game. First state playoff game in the CMA and ends on a terrific 3 nothing victory for Green Wave. A real, in the end, quality win on any way you look at it. Yeah, absolutely it was. Absolutely it was. It was a, a great effort. There were times when it looked like the play was stagnant, I guess is maybe a word for it. It just didn't seem to be flowing well. Uh, but in that third period... Uh, Gardner must have figured that the second period when they came out physical, they came out, put the Jets on to start the third period. Uh, Greenfield's defense equal to the task and then some. And then once the momentum really shifted, it, it was all over. Yeah, I thought that 
they answered the physicality in the third period way better than they did in the second. They seemed to be expecting it, Green Wave did, and then could respond and use their speed to create problems and start breaking down this tough Gardner defense. In doing so, getting those two goals at the end, then they can enjoy the final couple of minutes. Those penalties came back, made it a little choppy again at the end, but a real, real quality win, tough, key third period to really pull out that victory is awesome. Yeah, so we're going to quickly recap the goals. And that first Greenfield goal, about halfway through the first period, nice play, Shane Prusak in the far corner, battle in the corner, carried the puck around behind the net, got it out to Matt Lavoine. Matt Lavoine right at the top of the goal crease, buried it, put the biscuit in the basket, got the green wave out to a one nothing lead. You want to score first. You want to get that goal home game. Second period, awful quiet. On my score sheet, I had nothing. No goals, no penalties. And uh, as we, as we kind of, you know, tongue-in-cheek joked about, that was the kind of period it was. It was just, it was there. You know, there were moments uh, of really good hockey, but not a lot to, to really make note of. In the third period, the teams had exchanged penalties early on. Jason Smith for holding. Uh, Chris Merchant for tripping through the first half of the period. Uh, really, that was all to speak of. Kevin Bauman, though, he, he was, he was uh, in my eyes, the star of this game tonight. There was no question about it. Worked both ends of the ice. Picked up the puck along the half wall to the goaltender's right side and just fired that hard shot and it went top shelf to make it 2-0 Green Wave. And what a great time and what a great game by the captain to do the little things in the defensive zone and then come up big when the team needs it with a second goal to give a little bit of breathing room and to shoot the puck in a high percentage area. It was a really terrific play and typical of the type of player that Bauman is and the skill set that he brings to the Green Wave. And that goal was unassisted by the captain. And then just about a minute and a half later from almost the identical spot, Sammy Knight unleashed one. Uh, that one, Sammy Knight just went right over the uh, the blocker side where the, the post meets the crossbar. He rang the dinner bell, but it was, it was definitely top shelf and Sammy Knight made it three nothing, Bill. There was no doubt about that one. That was a snipe up in the toy department. I mean, it was a fantastic goal. Yeah, I, I thought Quinn played as, as good a game as his defense allowed him to. Uh, the three goals that the Green Wave scored certainly couldn't put on him at all. Uh, it was just the Green Wave were not going to be denied. And they are going to be playing in the next round of this state tournament this coming Saturday out at the Bog in Kingston, Mass. against the Norwell Clippers. As I said, if you've got a Live Barn subscription, I know they've got Live Barn out at the Bog. Uh, if we find any other video options for you, we'll put them up on GreenWaveHockey.com. Also on the Green Wave Facebook page, Greenfield Green Wave Hockey. But for now, this is the Skate Dr. Lou Bordeaux for my buddy, Coach Bill Drake. It's been a pleasure to be with you this season. This is the last time we'll be at the CMA this season. Thank you to our underwriters. Thank you to Kevin Murphy, Alec Echol, the whole crew from FCAT, my buddy Luke right here in front of me. They've made it a pleasure this season. Joey on the ice, on the bony, doing the best he can with it. And of course to the entire Green Wave student athletes, coaching staff, it's always a pleasure. We love you guys. Good night from Greenfield.